Hello and welcome to my channel, The Way What Is Truth. Remember to like and subscribe and comment down below. Now, today's video is going to be all about the power of our words. Now, this goes for everything that we say, whether or not we choose to say please and thank you, even that makes a difference. All the way to things like if a parent has a son or daughter and that parent keeps uh, saying that you'll never amount to anything. That's a form of cursing your own child through your words. Of course, our words hold the power of both life and death. We have to be so careful what we say. The old, old saying that the pen is mightier than the sword, that's true. What we write down and the words we speak means much more. What goes off in our minds, you know, means much more than, than, than violence. You know, obviously violence, physical altercations and violence is no good. But our words do even more harm. You know, uh, you know, just ask anyone who's been in a verbally and uh, emotionally abusive relationship or friendship for that matter. And yeah, they, they'll tell you about words and our letters and our sentences that we write down and everything has a lot of power. OK, um, yeah. And there's an interesting article here on www.gotquestions.org which I'm going to read out of soon. But yeah, definitely tell me about any examples from your own life or people that you've known. Perhaps in your childhood, your parents uh, said things about you, perhaps. And they said, oh, you'll never amount to anything or whatever. Our words can curse people potentially for an entire lifetime. And what we say to our children, not that I have any children of my own, so I can't really speak from experience, but from what I've seen, from my own life experience, when parents talk down to their children and to their teenagers, and, you know, it might be something like, oh, you'll never lose weight, stuff like that. You know, we have to be so careful what we say. Our words can either build people up or tear people down, you know. And there's a reason why Jesus said, let your yes, your yes, and your no be no. Anything other than that is from the evil one. We need to be as innocent as doves, yet as wise as serpents both with our actions and with our speech. Now, now without further ado, oh, oh, oh yes, before I read from this article, we need to realise something as Christians, um, that what we say gives the enemy, the demons and the fallen angels in the second heaven, otherwise known as the spirit realm, it gives them permission and authority to do things. What, what, what the words we speak give demons permission to attack you and to attack other people sometimes as well, you know? If we, for example, try and put a curse on somebody else because we hate somebody or we think somebody should have done something that they didn't, somebody let us down or whatever it may be, and we try and curse them verbally or with a written curse or whatever it may be, that curse will come back onto us tenfold, perhaps, or maybe fivefold, you know. Our words are powerful. I, I'm not a superstitious type of person, but I do believe in the power of the second heaven and what's going on with this spiritual warfare, God's holy angels against the fallen angels, the forces of good versus evil. I do believe in that. You know, there's a difference between being superstitious and realising the reality of the world around us and that there's a lot more to this life than just what we see, hear, touch and smell. OK, there's more to this world than just the five senses. The Christian walk is a supernatural one. And what we say and what we do, indeed our actions are included in this as well. Because often what we say and what we do are tied together, are, are, are they not? OK, in fact, saying something bad to somebody or swearing, using curse words, blaspheming, using... God's name is a cuss word, taking the Lord's name in vain. That's also a part of it as well. Um, it all makes a difference to how the enemy deals with us because the enemy can and does gain authority in our lives and possibly in the lives of friends and family members that we have and in the lives of other people, perhaps a friend it could be as well. We've got to be so careful what we do, you know, uh, words can be like verbal bullets. They can tear people down or they can build people up. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to read out of this article, Got Questions, Your Questions, Biblical Answers, and it's from www.gotquestions.org. Um, 
So what does the Bible say about the power of words? And believe me, words do have a lot of power, more than what most people realise, okay? Which is why I decided to do a video about this. It's very, very important. Words are not simply sounds caused by our mouths shaping air passing through our lo passing through our larynx or logs, is that how you pronounce it? It's L-A-R-Y-N-X. I think it's larynx. Words have real power. God spoke the world into being by the power of his words, Hebrews 11.3. Humans are made in God's image and our words also have power. To be clear, human words do not have the power to manifest reality. Nobody can uh, create something just by speaking it. If I sat here right now and tried to create a cup of coffee right in front of me just by saying, cup of coffee appear. I can't do that. God could do it. He could probably give me the best cup of coffee in the world, <laughs> but I can't. That's what it means when it says, to be clear, human words do not have the power to manifest reality. But our words do more than convey information. They have an impact on people. The power of our words can burden one's spirit to even stir up hatred and violence. Words can exasperate wounds and inflict them directly. Alternately, words can build up and be life-giving. Yeah, and that's in Proverbs 18.21 and Ephesians 4.29 and Romans 10.14-15. to 15. Again, that's Romans 10.14-15. to 15. Of all the creatures on this planet, only humans have the ability to communicate through the spoken word. Very, very true. The power to use words is a unique and powerful gift from God. Speech and communication and language is something that most people take for granted, but it's incredible. It's really, really incredible. In fact, we don't realise how, quite how incredible it is, you know, and it's more proof that we are made after God's image and likeness, okay? None of the animals can speak. Um, our words have the power. Well, 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 we do speak, but we don't have language and words like the way we do. But they have a way of communicating. The birds, for example, speak to each other and they communicate with each other, but not in the same way that people do. Our words have the power to destroy and the power to build up. Proverbs 12, 6, okay? The writer of Proverbs tells us the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. In fact, I put that onto my thumbnail for this video. Proverbs 18 to 21. Are we using words to build up people or destroy them? Are they being filled with hate or love, bitterness or blessing, complaining or compliments, lust or love, victory or defeat? Words are tools that can make life better, but any tool can be misused. Okay. Words are so important that we are going to give an account of what we say when we stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how important our words are, okay? Jesus said, but I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. Now, we can repent of the bad things we've said. In fact, I encourage anyone watching this video to do so. If you know that you've said bad things, or perhaps you're not sure about certain things you've said, repent of it. Draw a line underneath it and repent. If you do it again, keep on repenting. We need to be carrying on to try and imitate Jesus. And it's very difficult to do, especially when our lives haven't gone the way we would like them to. And then it says this, for by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. That's how seriously Jesus takes our words. And that's Matthew 12, 36 to 37. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Matthew 12, 36 to 37. The Apostle Paul wrote, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Now, something that I'm guilty of is that sometimes I come out with daft things. I try and have a bit of a sense of humour about stuff. Uh, but we need to be careful, because a lot of what we say is quite flippant, it's quite superficial, it's quite shallow. That doesn't mean to say we should not have a sense of humour. We should. We shouldn't take things seriously all the time. But so much of what we say in this modern day and age is no good. You know, the world has its way of speaking. The world has its own wisdom and understanding. The world has its own speech. We shouldn't copy off the, off the wisdom and humour of this world. Now, I don't usually mention famous people or call people out, but what the heck? 
just think of Ricky Gervais. <laughs> okay, think of Ricky Gervais, that atheistic uh, comedian and so on and so forth. He's also an actor. Uh, I'm not really interested in famous people. I'm not the type of person to call anybody out. I'm just not. But think of his humour. It's no good. You know, he's blasphemed the Bible. He's made fun of the Bible and many things, not just religion. Uh, and that's an example of the words we shouldn't be copying off. That's an example of the sort of humour that us Christians should be not partaking because it's foolish. It's arrogant. It's, it's, it's ignorant, you know. Anyway, um, the Greek word translated unwholesome means rotten or foul and originally referred to rotten fruit and vegetables. Vulgar humour. This is what I was talking about when I mentioned Ricky Gervais. Sorry, Ricky. I love you, really. <laughs> I just don't like your humour. Anyway, uh, vulgar humour, dirty jokes and foul language have no place in the life of a Christian. How many of us Christians, myself included, swear from time to time? Sometimes I find myself swearing when nobody else is in the house but me. Now, I live on my own. I always have done, ever since I was in my early 20s. So I've got a lot of time on my own in the house. Often I find myself muttering things and saying things and talking to God and, and talking to him about our problems. And I don't always use the correct language. And I, more often than not, I apologise after I've done it as well. But nonetheless, it says here, vulgar humour... Dirty jokes and foul language have no place in the life of a Christian, and no one is immune from that, okay? Instead, our speech is to be characterised by only what is helpful or building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Colossians 3, 16 and 4 to 6. Helpful, edifying, meeting needs and beneficial. These are, are our descriptive goals for the words we use. There is a remarkable parallel between Ephesians 4.25, lying, and Ephesians 4.28, stealing, and Ephesians 4.29, unwholesome talk. Okay. In each case, Paul is urging us to be a blessing to those with whom we have daily contact. Rather than lie, we are to speak truth. Rather than steal, we are to do honest labour. Rather than corrupt with our speech, we are to build up. Each sin needs to be replaced with something wholesome. As followers of Christ, we should emulate the example of Jesus, whose words were so filled with grace and the multitudes were amazed. Luke 4, 22. Okay. Jesus reminds us that the words we speak are actually the overflow of our hearts. Matthew 12, 34 to 35. Now, let's just reflect on that. What we speak is a reflection of what's in our hearts. So if we're angry one day and we start swearing or saying bad things about somebody, start judging somebody, or we start using God's name in vain or as a cuss word, it means something is rotten on inside of us. It needs to be addressed. We need to take everything to the cross, and that includes our foul language, our bad speech that we may be guilty of from time to time. I like to get real. I realise that Christians don't always say the right things. Our words aren't always pure, okay? So again, Jesus reminds us that the words we speak are actually the overflow of our hearts. Matthew 12, 34 to 35. When one becomes a Christian, there is an expectancy that a change of speech follows because living for Christ makes a difference in one's choice of words. At least that's how it's supposed to be. But often with so many Christians, we have the same kind of humour that we used to have, the world's humour. We tend to come out with things like we used to. I mean, just today when I was in church, uh, I heard something that I thought didn't make much sense. And I said, oh, who cares, you know? And then I think I said afterwards, oh, God, you know, I shouldn't have done that. And I realised my mistake when I did it. So we need to be so careful. Having self-control and discipline uh, over our words and over other aspects of our lives isn't always easy to do. Now, the sinner's mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, Romans 3.14. But when we turn our lives over to Christ, we gladly confess that Jesus is Lord, Romans 10.9-10. The condemned sinner's mouth is silenced before the throne of God, Romans 3.19. But the believer's mouth is opened to praise and glorify God, Romans 15.6. Christians are those whose hearts have been changed by the power of God, a change reflected in our words. Remember, before we were saved, we were spiritually dead, Ephesians 2, 1-3. 
Paul describes those who are dead in sin. Their throats are open graves. Romans 3.13. Now you'll notice that with the vast majority of people who are unbelievers, when they talk, they tend to talk about worldly things. They talk about money, holidays, paying the bills. They talk about worldly matters, stuff to do with their own friends and family and hobbies and interests and so on and so forth. They talk about anything and everything except anything to do with the Bible or about God, or about repentance, or salvation, or how to become better people in Christ. That's got nothing to do in the life, that's, that has nothing to do in the life of an unbeliever. They have a worldly wisdom. They, they may be materialistic and greedy, but not all unbelievers are necessarily materialistic or greedy, although I do tend to think that about most unbelievers. They are more likely to be, because they are, they are of this world. They're putting emphasis on things and talking about things and making things important that aren't. We're talking about temporary temporary things and we can't take anything with us into the grave after we pass away. But that's why it says here, their throats are open graves. Romans 3.13. Just think about that. You know, a lot of what... Some people, some people that I know personally, every other word's a swear word. That shows that there's something wrong with their discipline, their self-control, and what's in their heart. And, and a lot of the time, swearing can just become a bad habit. I, I, I do know some people who have, who have hearts of gold, but unfortunately, they've gotten into the habit of swearing. So we mustn't judge anybody, but nonetheless, it's something we need to be aware of. We need to pray for each other, forgive one another, and to love one another. So, their throats are open graves. Romans 3.13. Our words are full of blessing when the heart is full of blessing. So if we fill our hearts with the love of Christ, only truth and purity can come out, come out of our mouths, okay? Peter tells us, in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. So 1 Peter 3.15, we should never shove the gospel down anybody's throat. So many Christians who try to witness to other people, and now there's nothing wrong with witnessing to people. We are called to do that, but there's a correct way of doing it and the wrong way of doing it. If somebody doesn't want to know and we carry on talking to them anyway, that's real bad because we're actually less likely to accept Jesus as Lord. Whereas if he was respectful and nice and kind and, and he was loving, and he wasn't condescending or sanctimonious in any way, then they'll remember that. I think, well, you know, I I rejected what that but what that Christian said, but I remember how respectful he or she was to me. They'll remember it for years to come, and sometimes years down the line, people can become believers because of our own personal conduct. Okay. And it's the same when people leave bad comments on our on our, our on honors Christians YouTube channels because I've had really really bad comments, okay, stuff that I wouldn't want to tell you about. But I responded to it with grace. Sometimes I didn't respond to it at all because I thought it'd be a waste of time. But certain ones that weren't too bad, I responded to it with grace. And people remember that. At, at the very least, they can't accuse you of stooping down to their level now, can they? We need to set a good example with our words and our conduct. And it's easier said than done a lot of the time. Anyway, but do this with gentleness and respect. 1 Peter 3.15 Let the power of our words be used of God to manifest the power of our faith. Be prepared to give the reason for why we love the Lord any time to anyone. Our words should demonstrate the power of God's grace and the, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. May God enable us to use our words as an instrument of his love and saving grace because if as Christians that's the end of the article by the way if as Christians are swearing and have a worldly sense of humour and are vulgar in our humour in our speech and we talk like the way the majority of people do that's not good okay we all need to keep ourselves in check and I thank you so so much for watching remember to comment down below and add anything that you may want to something useful to add to this video perhaps um as usual you can talk to me about anything at all down below even something that's not related to this video if there's something you want to chat about you want to shoot the breeze about something perhaps you know someone who you care about whom you want me to pray for it could be anything at all and definitely check out my uh, community page my uh, prayer wall that i've put onto my community page as well and check out my playlist and may god bless you all Bye-bye and take care.